Hello, my name is Sarah McAllister, and today we'll be learning about functions. I'd like to begin with some formal definitions, and then we'll move on to some examples. Now, let's recall that a binary relation R from a given set A to a set B is a subset of the cross product A cross B. In other words, R is a collection of ordered pairs where the first component of each pair is a member of the given set A and the second component of each pair is a member of the given set B. We write the ordered pair A comma B is an element of R to mean that the pair AB are in the relation R for some particular A and B. Now, a function in the abstract setting is defined to be a special kind of binary relation. So now we write the function f instead of r from a to b is a special binary relation such that for every a in a there is exactly one b in b such that a comma b are related by the function f. In this case we say that a maps to b under f and we write b equals f of a. And again we can do that because there's exactly one b for each a. It's helpful sometimes to visualize this so here, the purple circle A represents the set A, and the pink circle represents the set B. The function is represented by the arrow between them. And so here, we're mapping the element little a in A to little b in B with the function f, and we write b equals f of A. And there's some more notation we should become familiar with. We'll write f colon big A to big B means that f is a function that maps from the set A to the set B. It's often convenient to write down what sets we're talking about. It may change according to the example. Now similarly, we write f colon little a, and then we have an arrow with a foot on it to little b, and that means that the function maps the element, the member a of the set A to the element b of the set B. So we use the ordinary arrow for uh, the relationship between the sets, and we use the arrow with the foot to indicate the specific relationship between a pair of members of the sets. Now we have some more terminology. The set A is called the domain of the function, the set that we're mapping from. And then the set B that we're mapping to is called the target, or sometimes that's also called the codomain of the function. Now, sometimes we won't hit every member of the target set. We'll only hit a certain range or image of the set. And those are the members of the target B, such that there is an A, an element A in the set A that maps to the B. Now, in the special case where we have that the target is equal to the range or image, then the function is onto. Again, we say the function is onto if it maps onto every member of the target set B. And another special type of function is said to be one to one. And that means that um, every distinct member of every pair of distinct members of A go to different places in B. Equivalently, we can say if we start with a member of B, then there's exactly one member of A that maps to it. So let's illustrate this with some examples. I'll show you some diagrams and we'll determine whether or not it's a function, and whether or not the function is one-to-one -one or onto if it is a function. So in the first case, we have elements of the set A, A1, A2, A3, A4, mapping to some elements of B, B1, B2, B3, B4. As we can see, A1 goes to B2, A2 goes to B3, A3 goes to B4, and A4 goes to B1. So we want to know, is this a function? What we have to check to see if it's a function is that we want to see that every element of A maps to exactly one member of B. And by inspection, we can see that's the case. So the answer is yes, it's a function. And even better, it's one-to-one -one and onto. To check for onto, we want to see that 
every member of the target set B has been mapped to by a member of A, which again we can see by inspection. And to check for one-to-one, -one, we want to make sure that every distinct pair of members of A go to different places in B. So in other words, we don't want two members of A going to the same place in B, and we can also see that's not the case, so it is one-to-one. -one. For our second example, let's take a look at this diagram. And again, the first question is, is this a function? And we need to check, do, uh, does every member of A map to exactly one place in B? And we see that works for A1, A2, and A3, but then it breaks down at A4. We see that A4 is assigned both to B1 and to B3. So in this case, it's not a function, it's just a relation. And there's no need to check one to one or onto because it's not even a function. For our last example, let's look at this diagram. First question, is it a function? Yes, we can see that it is because as in the first example, each distinct member of A goes to exactly one member of B. We would like to know if the function is onto. So we need to check, does every member of the target set B have a member of A associated to it by the function? And we can see that's not the case because B2 is lonely. It doesn't have a partner in A, and therefore the function does not map onto B. It maps onto its image, which is a proper subset of B, not the entire target. And then finally, we'd like to see if it's one-to-one. -one. So we want to see that every member of B is associated to exactly one member of A, sort of like the backwards version of the definition of function. And we can see that's violated because B3 is mapped to by both A1 and A3, so it's not a one-to-one -one function, but it is a function, it's just not one-to-one -one or onto.